Hey everybody, uh, this is uh, a uh, process maker live stream. Uh, you got uh, Jose Maldonado here, our head of product, and uh, myself, Ethan Pressburg. Um, I'm your, I guess, your weekly host at this point. <laughs> um, we are currently trying to uh, um, get the demo that was literally working 20 minutes prior um, and has somehow, uh, I don't know, maybe Jose can tell us where we're at with that. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, no, so, so uh, thanks, thanks Ethan, for the, for the chance. chance. I'm, I'm so, so happy, happy to have a have chance, chance to, to chat, chat with you and, and everyone. everyone. Um, I'm, I'm Jose. Jose. I'm, I'm happy, happy to serve uh, uh, in our in product, product team. team. And, and I wanted, we wanted to have, have a chance to show some, some of the new things, things that are coming. So, so everything, everything that we'll be talking a little bit about today is not out, still in our lab, still in all dev work, but we want to do a quick show and tell. Um, and in order, in order to, to show, show some of this, some of this most, most recent, recent stuff, stuff it's, 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 as of yet unreleased, we have, we to, have to navigate, navigate a little bit of the quirks of engineering. So we're trying to figure out, uh, do we demo uh, it uh, from uh, one, one you know, cloud, cloud server or another? another. Uh, and we're and still, still ironing out that kinks. We might Wait, Jose, are you saying that software uh, is not perfect? Like you can't write perfect code? No, no, that's no, not what I'm saying at all. Software is amazing. What I'm saying is, it's not out yet. <laughs> so the, the, the price, price of sneak peeking into unreleased uh, bleeding, bleeding edge stuff, stuff is that we have, have to take, take some, some, some uh, risk with it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, hopefully we'll be able to show it and it'll be well worth it for uh, anyone watching this. Yeah. So yeah, let me, so let me see, see if I can get some of uh, one of our, one of our uh, awesome developers to, to show us a little bit. Uh, what we're thinking about. You want me to kind of introduce what uh, what the yeah, ideas of what we want to show? Yeah, uh, great idea. Go for it. So we're we're going to make a huge release um, next month. So we're, of course we're in this process of uh, just wrapping up, uh, just the nip and tuck in the, the end of it. So. Um, it includes a lot of great new features. And I also kind of on the sidelines, I encourage everyone to follow up all our, all our channels and uh, whatnot to get some context on, on a number of key things. But today I just want to um, talk about something very specific, uh, which has to do with uh, drop downs and how you know we can manipulate them on screen. This because it's a very common use case. It's a small feature, but it has a very impactful effect. Something so simple, but very powerful. Uh, and particularly, I'm referring to the capacity of feeding dropdowns directly from our collections. So we, we, since for a while now, we've had collections as an internal data source that allows us to you know, host and store data points, data elements. Um, but... Uh, but feeding fr from these from our own collections into our um, into our own screens, uh, there are several ways to do it, but none of them are straightforward. And I mean, you know, you know our message. We always want to uh, find a better way. There's always a better way. We always want to make every second count. So. Including in this release, and this is a this is one of the minor things. That we've got huge uh, tagline features that we want to preview uh, up ahead in the next few days. But I wanted to get started with this small one because everyone who's worked with our forms is always wondering how can I bring in uh, collection data into my forms more easily. And the nice uh, consequence of us reworking how we feed collection data into our forms. Um, is that we make it even easier to drive um, to drive dependent dropdowns. So cascading dropdowns is also uh, a term for it. And this is, of course, the very common use case that if you have two or more um, conditionally related dropdowns, if you select a value in the first one, you want the options of the second one to refresh and react to that selection. Um, so this so use case, we see it uh, uh, very yeah, commonly, yeah. of course, right? Select a state and show me cities just on those state. Or uh, in, in our higher ed, 
select uh, 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 department, biology, and then on the core selection, show me just courses from that department. And if I go back and change biology to you know math, the second list should update. That kind of dynamic, uh, or rather those kind of dynamics, uh, we have currently several ways to uh, incorporate and to design for uh, tools for our users. But uh, we want to give you a sneak peek of just that much easier way to manage those scenarios. Have so we that's done this before, Jose? Sure. Have we done any sneak peeks before recently? I don't, I don't think, think so, so. Um, um, or not to my knowledge, and certainly not kind of in a public forum. Um, maybe, uh, maybe case by case, case to, see, to, to you know, know key stakeholders customers. and focus yeah. group partners, but not openly. Um, so we're very excited to give this opportunity. Yeah. So this is this is part of uh, I mentioned last week to our regular viewers. I hope uh, that um, we're gonna start you know adding more content, changing some of the structures of the uh, the live stream. So this is part of that. Um, uh, hopefully, more frequently, we'll have these uh, sneak peeks into features that are going to be coming to uh, a uh, process maker uh, instance near you. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So, so in order, in order, to, order show to show this, this then, we're taking this, this feature that's, you know, deployed in the bowels of our labs. Uh, and, just and just publishing, publishing in, into a, a into a public facing uh, cloud server so we can show it. Um, that's probably going to take another two minutes, two minutes, give or take. So, okay. That, that that's that's just you know that's the law of live demos. You, you got to have one every <laughs> now and again, and then and then it kind of it builds that protection for your future. You know, for a certain amount of time. I'm, I wonder what that length of time is where you get gain that kind of like mystical almost protection from from live demos breaking but uh, i want to believe that <laughs> yeah no you're, you're absolutely right um but that's just because you know yeah we, we want to show the latest so yeah that's the effect uh let me do a quick ping see where we're at uh two minus so i'm just monitoring all these blocks just blazing past so it's hard to keep up should be any any minute now or else yeah we could just loop in an engineer to show it it kind of directly from the lab but yeah it'd be cool to get an engineer's perspective as well if if we had one available maybe they they might be able to share some uh some insights too oh for sure all right i think it's back up yeah let so me let me Let's check, check. And, and it seems, seems like, like it is. is. And yeah. then, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's no, we just, just brought it up. up. So I don't know if <laughs> if all our services, services underneath are, are working, but um, let me know when to when we're good to let switch me over. Try. Yeah, yeah. Give, yeah me give me one second, and I'll try to just log in here. And all right. Yeah, seems to be up. Seems to be up. So, all right. So let, we're, let's transition back to our screen, and there we are. And <laughs> Thought you were going to say, let's try to, to switch to our regularly scheduled content. <laughs> but this is the regular scheduled content. <laughs> you know, it actually did cross my mind, and I had to change it mid-sentence. But <laughs> <laughs> you just need one of those. Um, you know, gifts, the waiting of the the cartoon dog yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to freak out. All right. All right. All right so, take it away, Jose. Yeah, we get started. Awesome. So you see my screen? I don't I don't know. I'm I'm having too many windows. Yes, <laughs> we can see it, it right. just fine. We see the, and uh, the process. This closure, we're showing we're this while we're building, we're building on, on it, we're testing it. So this is straight off the lab. So if we fall off a cliff midway, this just because you know we're we're showing you the real deal. We're not curating any slides just for not for this audience <laughs> all right so well i i, de I declare the case right um we want to make uh we want to make e easy to drive some uh collection data into drop downs and then have them um smartly related um so i was thinking we could do a quick example i started working in, on a and actually i haven't <laughs> because it's 
it's pretty basic. But let's let's say we want to put like a, a sports tickets shops, and I don't know why we went with this this example, <laughs> but uh, it's just any any imagine any scenario in which we have lists related with each other. So if we were to model this, um, you're seeing my my screen builder, correct? So many of you, of yes, course, will be familiar right. with uh, Screen Builder, and uh, and if not, then you know we have a drag and drop uh, Screen Builder forms designer where we just drag the elements that we want to populate in our screen. So if we had a sports tickets listing, uh, the use case that we're thinking about is you know we want to have two two drop downs, two select lists, and we'll customize them in a second. But the idea, of course, is that. Um, you know, if we select the right league or, or organization like the NBA or the NFL, then we can, you know, filter down for, for teams that are in that league. Um, similarly, maybe we want to start by, by city or state, and then we see all these teams in this. Uh, just ways of kind of navigating. It's a very basic use case. Um, and it's, it's interesting to just realizing what are our options today to accommodate these if we if we check out kind of the, the ways that we can source one of these lists uh, basically from just inputting the data directly or perhaps by or perhaps by using a data connector we'll talk a little bit about that now currently if you if you do add a data to a collection you will get the data connector uh, immediately created which is pretty cool and it's useful but we're going a step further in, in ease of use with what I want to show today. So let's start putting this together and hopefully it'll start to make sense. So before we come back to this uh, screen, because what we want to do is, yeah, let's select uh, sports leagues and then let's select teams in that league. Um, what, what we want to start with is creating collections for, for these. Collections, of course, are a standard process maker feature that allows us to hold data. Uh, a data repository of, of sorts. So it makes sense for us to use collections as kind of these parametric source for uh, dropdowns that have multiple options. And it also allows us to manipulate those options directly in the collection and we don't need to touch our screens. Um, Can you maybe give right. a, a little bit of a, a more like basic description of collections in case we have somebody who, who hasn't necessarily had the chance mm -hmm. to play with that feature yet? Yeah, so yeah, we're so gonna we're see gonna... it in a second by 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 the effect of us creating it. So so let's start by the data. Let, let's imagine we're starting from scratch. OK, we want to select, for, uh, pick from franchises or, sorry, leagues, perhaps, and then pick teams from that league. So one way to go at it and is to just you know create a list. And this is something, in fact, that several of our customers have discussed. Like, hey, I just want to create a list kind of a separately, just on a spreadsheet to maintain the options that I want to pick from. Um, but uh, what, what are our options? So collections become another great, day of, a great way of doing that. So let's imagine we have a standard spreadsheet. And I don't know, let's say we have uh, sport. We have the, uh, the actual league. And then we could have some additional data, maybe um, the, the number of teams uh, and so on. And then let's just put some some sports uh, some sport leagues in here real quick. So let's say that we have uh, and help me out, Ethan. I am by no means a sports uh, super fan, so I'm not sure we even went with what, this example, but it's a good example. So I'm sticking to it. So let's say we have the NBA. Oh, sorry about that. We have the NBA. We have colleges NCAA. We have MLS. We have what else do we have? NFL, uh, uh, NHL, NHL, MLB. Shout, shout out, out to the to Vancouver, Vancouver Canucks. Canucks. <laughs> MLB. MLB. All right, we could keep I on going. Right? Yeah, that's good. And so, so, let me, so this would be uh, basketball. This would be. I'm just going to do college because it could be anything, right? This you know what? And and I, we didn't talk about this before, Jose. But what do you think oh, about on. about asking ChatGPT maybe? to generate a CSV out of the, that list. <laughs> so very possible. We're, we're doing, <laughs> we know about a lot of things that we're doing around this, but, but yes, all of these pieces will start to make sense together. Um, all right, so we have this list. Um, now we want to have something similar, and we'll come back to it for, for teams. Now for this, I, I'm going to confess I cheated a little bit. 
um, I just, you know, looked on the web. Is there any kind of list that we can ma manipulate? And I found this nice list here uh, in GitHub where you can see it's uh, a, list, a list of teams. So this also, it, it helps us to underscore another example, which is in many cases, this, these lists already exist. Either you maintain them or you have spreadsheets for them uh, and you want those lists to populate your dropdown. So this example will help us uh, not just save us time of typing all of this stuff in. Um, so let's take a look at a little bit of what that works. So I'm going to come over back to our um, back to our instance here. Let me keep this uh, screen builder uh, paused for a minute. I'm going to transition to our um, collections. So over here in admin, we have our collections module. And as you mentioned, uh, this is a, a place for us to, to create data repositories. So collections are... Think about them as databases, um, although not necessarily uh, in the you know traditional sense of re relational table-based data. Yeah. More... You mean like 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 it, it, it maybe not also not to be confused with collections in the terms of like MongoDB, right? Because that's that's how they refer to databases as collections. So it's it's not that either, right? So it's, so it's yeah, it's, it's stealing some of the same concept. For the terminology, I guess. Um, but in essence, these are self-standing data repositories that you can fill with whatever type of structured or unstructured data you want. And then this serves to, of course, um, to be read and manipulated and leveraged within within your your solutions, your processes, your screens. Uh, so that's why it's so cool that we have now a better way of, of just for instance, feeding dropdowns with collection data. Let's go ahead and start a new collection real quick. So this will start to make sense uh, for those leagues that we just created. So I'm gonna call it leagues, uh, sports leagues. And we need the way that collections are understand a little bit the data that they can collect is through screens. Now we can have a different a sidetrack just chatting about collections me, that would include like you're not you're not restricted to, to whatever I pick in this uh, thing. You can send any sort of JSON object into it. Uh, so happy to chat about collections elsewhere. But for now, let's just let's just go with this. Uh, I think I had somewhere in here, uh, maybe in orgs and sports already some fields for for this. Um, and I'm just going to pick any, you know, screens here to, to, to try and be quick. Orgs and sports. This is basically defining when we are navigating a collection record, what is the screen layout and fields that we're seeing. So we don't have, it, of course, any uh, records because we just created this collection. So now what we can do is import a CSV file. So let's come over to our spreadsheet here. And I'm going to uh, download this real quick. So download the CSV and all right. So I uh, wait, but I'm I'm just showing uh, I'm just showing um, I'm just showing a piece of of this. So you might not even see my CSV file, uh, but let me see. So we come over here. I'm going to browse a CSV. And um, should be fine. All right. Pretty straightforward. We map the CSV fields to the uh, collection fields. So our org, you can see here we have sport league, number of teams. So I'm going to add a league here, sport here, and let's just say number of teams. We're not going to import it. Uh, the first row does contain column names in our example, so we'll just skip that row, and we should be good to go. And sure enough, we have whatever was so our in our board, spreadsheet. See here we have we can lead. then quickly just preview this by adding uh, a couple of columns into our view. Let's double check, and there we have, all right, MLB, NHL, and so on. So that was collection number one. Again, what we're trying to do is to then use a use this data to feed our drop down in our tickets uh, form when whenever we're figuring out the right league for our tickets. All right, and then we want drop down number two to show us teams from these leagues. So we're going to repeat this example real quick. 
uh, except now I want to use actually the data that I just found on the on the um, on some web page uh, a few minutes ago. So let's go back to collections. We just created one called leagues. Now I'm going to create one. Um, I yeah, also want to just remind everyone while we're doing this that you know feel free to ask questions. Um, this is this is a live stream, so it's more of a uh, you know back and forth that we're more than happy to have. And uh, Jose here is you know like we said our head of product, so a rare instance where you can just you know kind of like ask me anything type situation. So keep, if there are any questions, please keep them coming or ring them. Awesome, yeah, happy to chat. All right, so we have our collections for teams. And of course, it's blank. So now I'm going to go in here to this list. And I think I'll just copy these contents. And then I'm going to uh, paste them real quick in a new flat file. And then there, give me a second. Um, all right. Where am I? All right. Then we come here to import, browse open wait that's not the right one let me do that again real quick save teams oh i have the wrong folder here uh downloads save 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 mm, bear with me because of this format it's trying to not save. Give me a sec. This is just me just trying, trying to, to get a flat get a file, file out of the internet. internet. This is just li live demos. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I see what's up. This didn't copy correctly. Let's do that again. Copy raw contents. All right, let's try that again. And paste file this is this is me trying to use this uh text edit all right teams dot csv team dot csv and uh, it's trying to we're not to, seeing uh, what you, we just see the game today repository yeah, yeah. I, just, I just i think i'm, I'm sharing, sharing the wrong, the wrong thing, thing but, but um, okay. I, I, apologize, I apologize, but just, just bear, bear with me one second. second. No problem. Where is I had it right here? Uh, oh yeah, oh, here yeah, it is. Yeah, I think this is, is this is what I'm looking for. for. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Yes. All right. So over here, and let's try this again. And let's try this again. This is our export. All right. All right. Now it came in. Um, I already had a screen with these fields, so that just to make a quick the map. And then, so we see our columns are team, city, state, venue, league, which are these team, city, state, venue, league. And then we just, I'll just map them real quick. Now we don't necessarily need them all for this example, but it does give the sense that we can have just more and more of the data. First row does contain, so we'll skip that as well. Import and hopefully, all right. There we go. So um, let's just make sure that we add, wait, where are our columns? There we are. So team, city, we don't need to add them all. League, all right. Teams, all right. So, oh, this list of, just because we, I know some people are going, this list is from 2013. So of course, this has changed wildly, but <laughs> but hopefully the idea, the concept still applies. <laughs> I don't know if the Coyotes <laughs> still play at the JoeBing.com arena. <laughs> I, I've I don't wanna... never even heard of them. To be exactly. exactly. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to hear no Coyotes fans being like, ah. <laughs> yeah, this is NHL stuff, especially maybe if you were basketball or football. But I mean, I, the Canucks do play the Rogers Arena. arena. I, I can attest, attest to that. that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so. Uh, but uh, again, it's a great example. We have tons of, of rich data related to, the, to each of these teams, uh, including the league that they play. So now we just we have kind of a common field that's going to help us drive that relationship. So 
let's recap real quick. We created two collections, uh, one manually, one import, uh, one from a flat file import. Um, and we want to now use them in our screen. So let's come back to our screen. Awesome. So here we've got our two fresh select list. Now there's nothing here. We just dragged them a few minutes ago. So how would we go about this? Well, um, currently, currently, if you wanted to populate this uh, list or any of these lists with our collections, the the most common way would be, of course, to select the 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 field, come to data source, and in in the data source selection option, you'd pick data connector, right? And this means that somewhere over here, the data connector uh, for this specific for this specific collection has been created. And this is extremely useful. We use it in our own data connectors. You can use it in your scripts and so on. However, it does involve that you need to like manually configure the endpoint, manually configure the data object to map it and make sure that all the, the API calls are in order. So what we're introducing is a direct data source from collections. So before that, let's just put some, some, some high level uh, names and labels to these. So first we want to maybe select the, uh, what is it, the league. And, you know, choose a league. And then over here we want to select a team and label choose a team. All right. So all right, all right, already this amazing sports ticket web page is starting to make sense. Of course, we don't have anything in here. So now let's tie them into those collections. Come back to the design. All right. So let me come back here. This is where you configure it. We're not going to use a data connector. And instead, you're going to find a new option called collection. Um, so this is what we're introducing. We already have collections as our own module. Like it is our own data repository. So it makes perfect sense that we make it that much easier for you to find uh, objects and uh, records in the collection to populate your dropdowns. So you get another dropdown that says, well, select a collection. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick whatever we created, which was the leagues collection. And then you get this, these nice clear uh, additional select options for label and value. Label, of course, is whatever you're going to read on screen within your control. And value is what the variable will collect for uh, the made selection. Does that make sense? So when you click any of these, and I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure that you're seeing it, but what you'll see are all the fields that are part of our collection. And we get to pick with, with, within uh, each of them. So I'm going to pick just the, uh, the org, I think, is what holds the value that we want, org and org. So all we did was data source collection, select the collection, just click it from a list, select the field for label, select the field for value, and we don't need to do anything else. If we go to preview, this should work uh, immediately. And sure enough, this is our collection. Uh, MBA NCAA. In fact, if we come back here to collection and we just come back here to again revisit our or our uh, leagues, I think it's the last one I created. So it should be it should be here. Uh, ch -ch -ch created. Where is my collection? Leagues. Right, MLB, NHL, well, we can sort it. NBA, NCAA, MLS. Um, nice. NBA, NCAA, MLS. So straight away, super easy. And, if, and you see, if we make a selection, you can see over here at our data preview, the value that's been attached to it, right? MLS, NFL. And that's, that's you know, I'm just happened to using the same firmware. It's pretty so, so far, that updates so far, so in real good. time. It updates in real time. Um, sounds simple enough, sounds basic enough, but this is foundational because it allows you to be mindful of how do you want to maintain your drop downs. Now, of course, this is a silly example. We have three values in here, but you know, we already have a list of 122 teams that we're going to start feeding in a second now. 
Um, and you know, you're not limited to the amount of data that you can store in a collection, which allows you to maintain these lists and these relationships without touching your screens or playing with the data connectors to get them to work. So now let's uh, do the same thing for the team selection. So I'm going to come over here, choose a team. Then we're going to come to data source. The data source, I'm going to change and select the option that reads collection. It's asking me select a collection. And I'm going to come in here and pick uh, teams. Wait, wait, and teams, Where? give me a second. Where are my teams? I think, I think this one is my teams labels. Team state venue league. All right. Team. Team. Let's see what happens in here. Um, oh, so I haven't I haven't related them yet, right? So right now we see all the teams of all leagues. Right? So Celtics in there with the Pistons, with the uh, Phillies, Phillies with the Pirates, with Cubs, the Cardinals, Giants, yeah, yeah. yeah right. all leagues. So now we want to link them together. So I'm going to come in here. Um, and the way to do that is to use a PMQL filter. This um, will apply for both data sources, and, sorry, for data connectors and collection source lists. So it's pretty flexible. And what we want to do is basically add a filter that says, don't show me the entire list. Show me those who have in the league value a match with whatever I chose on the league. So to make that a little more evident, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to rename our league dropdown variable to selected league so that we understand that this is the league selection that we made. And I'm going to just add that to our PMQL. So let's we come back here to the data source. And just to, to, to refresh, we have uh, here a field in, a, in, in the collection. And I just switched it here so we can see it. It's called league. So this is part of the data that's within the collection. Um, but I don't actually want to use that as value. Um, in fact, I'm going to check venue just so we see something different, right? So whenever we select a team in the dropdown, the value that we're storing is the venue because maybe we want to use that venue to look up seats in the next collection because that's what we're going to sell you. So, so then what we need to do is tell it again, don't show me all the uh, sports. Show me those whose league matches the selected league. And this is done with a very simple uh, PMQL expression or query which is uh, data dot whatever field we have, which is league, should be equal to, um, to the leagues that we just made. So the way to do that is using our good old mustache. Wait, where is it? Good old mustache. And it's called a uh, selected league. This is the name of our field uh, over here, if I'm not mistaken. So. That's pretty much it. Data league, selected league. By adding this sentence here, this query, then it automatically understands that this list is dependent on the value of that field. So if we come over here, uh, we can try a couple of things. First, you can see that if I try to choose a team, of course, the list is not populated. It's waiting for us to make the first selection. So I'm going to go ahead and select. Um, NHL, and you can see here in selected league, it updated. So now it's not working. Of course, it's not working. Let's see. Let me try that again. Maybe it's latency. No, no let, me let me see, see what we're first. stringing in here. Data, is it called selected league? I think it is. Oh, I think your, your L is lowercase. It's not camel cased in the variable name. So here you camel cased it, but yeah, yeah there he is. is. Yeah, yeah, I just, I co just copied, copied it. it. Just want to see if you were paying attention. <laughs> Dodged a bullet there. All right. <laughs> or, or was that intentional? <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I guess you'll never find out. 
Right. So now we're seeing NBA teams, right? Celtics, Knicks. And of course, if we make a selection, what's the value that we're actually storing? So TD Garden, which, you know, very nice venue in Boston. If instead we want to check out uh, uh, Heat. Try the Heat, yeah. At least, oh, at American least, Airlines. At least, at least in 2013, they were playing in American Airlines. <laughs> They've always played American Airlines. I remember going there when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, I saw, I saw LeBron James there. Um, <laughs> so did I. <laughs> let's change this to NHL. Uh, and lo and behold, now our list is not showing. And you see how the team selection reverted um, to null. It, it, it cleared because the, the relationship is lost or is refreshed, rather. So now let's choose a, uh, a team. And of course, we're going to go with good old Canucks. And there it is, Rogers Arena. Beautiful uh, bay in Vancouver City. So, so then let's recap. What are, we, what are we seeing here? We created a couple of collections, which you can create through different means. And then we're using those collections to feed the values that we want to show in these dropdowns. And then we string them together with a, with a simple PMQL sentence to equate how we want to, the, the variable that we want to filter list number two with whatever value we're selecting on list number one. And the real innovation here is, again, it's small, but it's foundational, is that feeding these dropdowns from your collection is now just a couple of clicks away. You don't have to tinker with response data. You don't have to tinker with the list all, get record, API endpoints from the end connector um, if you don't care for. There's still a huge value on that. And if you do have lists using that, that's of course still supported. Uh, it's particularly useful if you want to take those kind of default endpoints that are created automatically for you and tweak them because you can go to the data connectors uh, interface and maybe customize the data objects for additional purposes. But if you don't want to mess with any of that, you just select collection as a source, pick your collection from a list, and we're good to go. So that's, that's how this is going to work. So question for you, um, Jose. So right now this, this works specifically with collections and it's, it's, you can see it's super tightly integrated with, with our collections feature. Um, what about expanding that to other areas of our product? Like say, for example, you know, you wanted to do that for, you know, our users and groups that, you know, are stored in our, in process maker, or maybe you want to use it on a, a external data source. Like, is that, is that something that, that, uh, we're thinking about? Yes. yes. Um, um, good question. So let's think about this real quick. Currently, this only works on select lists, which means that you could have potentially, um, as you configure your select list, wait, where is it? Over here, um, you can have data connectors and collections will support this. And by this, I mean the capability of so data connectors, they work today, but we, what, what we want to introduce additionally for data connectors is the same, um, the same proactive response to the PMQL tie-in. So that you can, in fact, if you do have two uh, lists using data connectors, you can just still create your query that references the shared variable, um, and that will also work. So data connectors and collections. But but part of the simplicity that I love from what I've seen is that it's so it, it, it's very well connected. You just drop, click, drop, click, drop, click. When we start introducing variables and that, that starts to make it a bit more uh, not complicated is the wrong word, but not as simple for for, you know, the end user. That's a great point. Um, and you're just teeing up another talking track, which is very important, which is what can we do with PMQL as a concept? So to recap, what, what's really going on here is that we replaced data connectors as the only way to feed into, or rather to read from collections with a dedicated collections uh, 
option for data sourcing. That's the real kind of innovation here specifically. Now, this, of course, relates relies on the existing uh, but separate feature of using PMQL. And, and you're spot on. Now that we've made it so simple for you to click on a collection, to click on a label, to click on a field, it kind of then becomes a little evident that uh, looks like now, after all that point and click, we still have to be a little cognizant of our data model in order to, to, to complete the last mile, which is using that PMQL expression. And as much as we love PMQL, because it's, it, it's extremely powerful, um, it's, a, it's a very uh, well understood um, opportunity for making it that much more accessible. And so uh, we are working a lot on that. And we will also see during our uh, May release. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm not sure I mentioned uh, this earlier, but this feature that we're seeing right now, collection dropdowns um, and dependent dropdowns out of collections, is part of our May release. So you'll you all be. That was going to be the next up. question. When, 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 can, you, when can our customers start playing with it? Yeah, yeah you can, can all start, start playing with this, with this um, a month from now, now, which is which extremely is exciting. Um, and an additional feature that we will introduce is an overhaul of PMQL. Um, not necessarily, I don't think that's framing it right. PMQL will continue to work, but we're adding an additional layer on top that will make it that much easier for you to leverage it. And of course, this specific use case, which is, you know, linking your collections together, uh, will be included in that. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah, that that um, that integration with large language models for being able to convert the natural language to you know, in this case, PMQL, that's just another way that we're, we're bringing in artificial intelligence and all the, the trends and staying up to date with our competition. So um, when, when, can, when can our customers expect to see that in the product? That's a hot question. It's also, it's also coming, coming in May. May. So you're saying in May, our customers will be able to just say, I want A, B, C, D, and ProsMaker will do it for them? Well, well, depends, depends on, what on what ABCD, ABCD is. is, but, but if it is, is um, <laughs> you know, show me only the collection values that have uh, the same league that this other collection has. <laughs> that, so, like, you uh, don't need to know SQL. You don't need to know, like, you just need to know SQL. how to talk. You don't talk. need to know PMQL. PMQL. <laughs> you just need to know how to, how to talk, right? You just need to know how to you write need, write a sentence you, in you, English. Yeah, so or we're, Spanish. We're, we're, it works with Spanish that, too, right? That, Any that language. So we're, we're, we're launching a natural language to PMQL interface that allows you to generate these PMQL queries out of your natural language prompts, which apply for a number of different places. I mean, you've, well, customers that are familiar with our PMQL feature will appreciate how it's used in different places. Case in point here. Um, all of these opportunities, all of these places where it's used will benefit from a natural language layer. And that is also available in May. Do you, uh, do you think we'll be able to get a sneak peek of it before that? Probably, Probably but I don't want to talk, talk about, about scheduling, scheduling or live streams. Ah, uh, there we go. Hedging, hedging. hedging. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, we'd love to show it to you. Well, let's see if we can get some get that get that to happen. But thank you so much, Jose, for for taking the time out of your busy schedule. We know with the new uh, release coming out, you have an insane schedule. So thanks for making the time to join us and to kind of share with this us uh, the sneak peek of this incredible new feature. Yeah, no, thanks. Happy, happy to happy to, happy to, to chat, chat to show, show this feature. This feature. We, we saw it warts and all how, how it's <laughs> coming uh, <laughs> alive <laughs> underneath <laughs> our eyes. So so sure. sure. Happy to, Happy to, to continue, continue the conversation. conversation. And uh, and for anybody that's uh, watching this in the future, please feel free to like and subscribe below. Um, you know, so that you can make sure to hear all of our about all of our new features, like you know, sneak peeks into the next big thing, AI and all that great stuff we were talking about. So with that, um, we bid you farewell and have a wonderful weekend and and good Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Bye all. Bye all.